Now you see that tiny little space over there with those two small couches? That's the only part of my living room where any chilling actually happens. The rest of the living room, as you can see, is just pans, floor to ceiling. And all we do is rehearse in here or record music in here or just do music stuff. And I got all types of pans, bass pans, lead pans, cello pans, all types of pans. Come over here into the hallway with me and it's more pans, floor to ceiling, pans everywhere. Which is why I'm going to be the perfect host for this little vlog on how and where to buy a steel pan. Now the first thing you're going to need is a case. And then you're going to need some foam or some kind of soft material to line the case. And then when you get your pan, you'll see that the top of the pan is concave, but the bottom of the pan is convex. So you're going to put the belly of the pan against the soft part of the case because that's how you protect the notes. All right, cool. So I'm going to get dressed and ready and I'll see you in about five. Welcome back. Now, first I showered and everything, I'm ready to go now. The next thing you're going to need is a big ass van to carry your brand new pans. And you might be asking, why have you got a van so big just for a steel pan? Well, I never told you what type of steel pan I was getting, so all will be revealed. So I'm going to get in the van. I've got my mate Nigel there to help me. And uh, I'll update you on the trip as we go on. Peace. The man there himself, Tucson. Good little video documentaries. Yeah. Say hello to the people there. Man. Yeah, yeah. Hi, people. Hi, people. I'm trying to get some parking. We're just, just trying, trying to get, get, just trying to park. Logistics. Logistics. <laughs> so here we are. We're finally here. And we're about to go down. All right. So we're going down into what they call the pan yard. You can see all kind of pans in there. Like I said, old pans, new pans, pans that's being made, pans that's half made, pans that's not painted yet. There we are, floor to ceiling pans. Let me go and come back. Let me bring them, let me, let me take them to this. So what I gotta do, go ahead and collect the checkbook. Yeah, yeah, get the checkbook. Get the checkbook off the hall. I'm telling you, I overcome a script where he overcome. We'll come back and sit down with him maybe tomorrow. Caribbean oh, accents. I want the checkbook to rent. Yeah, we, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? From Barbados. Want, it, it, we need the checkbook to pay the rent. But this is Tucson. Tucson Clark. We're in Bath. We finally made it. Tucson, can you tell us a bit about how you make pans? What the process is? Well, that is a whole program <laughs> in its own right. But to simplify it, it's just a question of um, and this is very simple. Like uh, uh, we get an oil drum, we stretch out the the, the, the surface area. How do you um, how do you do that? Uh, with a hammer. Let me show you the sort of hammer that I would normally use. Let me see if I've got one. Right. Dangerous weapon. Right. So this is this is like a a, a sledgehammer. Okay. And uh, it's like seven pound hammer. So I don't need to go to the gym. I just <laughs> deal with this seven pound. <laughs> Seven pound hammer, right. and sink down the drum. Now, depending on what range of pan you're going to make, okay. depends on how far you need to sink it. Okay. Like for a tenner, right. they're generally like eight, nine, ten inches. So that's the lead. That's you the know, lead. so that's quite a lot of stretching from cold. Okay. And then the base are normally about four, four and a half inches. Yeah. That's a tenner. So that's a tenner. All right. So you can see that one's sunk quite low. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you yeah. got to sink that quite low. Yeah. So that's a whole big panel beating experience that you, you need to get it anywhere down to that depth. Okay. You know? All right. And nowadays we try to get specialist drums so that we can guarantee that it's not going to burst. Back in the early days, yeah, um, you just had to get what drums were available and sometimes you would get splits depending on yeah, the, you get the, a the split material. Yeah, I'm trying to stretch it that's right. too much. That's it, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And you were saying that the base, you don't think 
So you don't think the bigger drums as much? No, 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 because you've got bigger note area. Let me just get one for you and I can show you. All right. So remember I said I came to buy a pan? Yeah. I didn't tell you what kind of pan it was and I needed a big van for it. But well, here we are, this is the reason why. Because today I've come to buy a set of big fat bass. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you're hearing those low tones. <laughs> Base. One of my new um, bass, brand new. I, 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 again, need, we don't need I need to, to touch it. As deep as a tenor. Man, it just feels it feels good. So as you can see, um, as Tucson was saying, with the deep with the bass, with the deeper notes, um, the deeper notes need a larger surface area. So as yeah. you can see, as opposed to that tenor, these notes are quite big yeah. and the um the drum isn't sunken as deep. That's what you were saying, Tucson, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, so after you sync the drum, what do you then do? Well, then comes a the design, uh, like the actual note sizes and whatever. That all comes into play. Um, we draw it out, and then we, we... If you can get closer, I don't know if you can see it, because this yeah. drum, like, there's a, a line. Yeah. A, yeah. Along that line, that's, that's made with a nail punch. Okay. All right? And that helps to separate... Um, the, the the actual sections. Okay. So we engrave that with a nail punch. Yeah. And most tuners and pan makers take pride in how straight they can draw a line or how neat they can make a curve, and and and, and the actual design of the pan. So you were saying about the um about the, the groove in here. Mm. What this here? What, what what's the point of that? Like what does that do? Well, that helps separate um the, the all the different segments. So, for instance, this note is B flat, I think. So, that's B flat and F. So, each one of these has to be an independent note. Or, so, you have B flat, uh -huh. octave B flat down. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then the fifth note to that would be the F. Uh -huh. But each note has to be independent. Okay, so all right. So once you've drawn a line in between the spaces, which are the notes, what do you then? How do you put the sound in in the notes? How, well, what how... we do, what we do then, is there's various techniques. Various different tuners use different techniques. But I am now switching over to the technique of, in its raw state, knocking back out the note from the from the other side. Okay. And actually making a surface area. Yeah. And then pre-tuning it before we burn it. I never used to do that before, but I've just seen the results that Gus and Sheldon and a lot of the tuners in Trinidad are using. Yeah. And I'm kind of smitten by it. So although I've been doing this for 50 years, I'm still learning bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. Same as they learn from me, I learn from them. So what's, so what's, what's process, burning it? You mentioned burning it, what's burning it? Yeah, well, well we've actually got to anneal it now. We've got, we've, got to, um, we've got to get the metal in a state, soften it, Mm -hmm. Right, because what we've done is 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 harden it in terms of all the hammering that's gone on. So now we're going to soften it back again, so we've got it pliable so you, enough to be able to work it. So you heat it yeah. up so that you can so manipulate up, the yeah. shape easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you talked about um, bringing a note from from the underneath. Can you yeah. turn it? Can you turn it over so we can look inside the drum? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I would do with these drums is bang it this way down. Okay, let me see what's right. going on in there. As you can see, brand new. The drum itself is concave, yeah. but the notes are convex. The, yes, notes that's come, right. the notes come out, obviously, as the drum's sunk yeah. in. So, yeah. yeah, all right. So, just to recap quickly, we get the steel drum, we sink the drum with a hammer, and then the next phase is to mark out where the notes are going to be with a nail punch. So, we basically draw the notes with the nail punch which helps the separation of the different sounds so that the E flat stays with the E flat and the B flat stays with the B flat, etc., etc. in the drum. And then we turn the drum over and we hit the notes out from underneath so that as the drum is concave, the notes are convex. And then we burn it, heat it up so that it becomes malleable again because in the hammering process, Though we've sunken and stretched the drum, 
we've made it hard so we heat it up to make it soft again so that it's malleable and then so after the burning situation then then we start the proper tuning so all, all that i've mentioned before that's preparation okay but then the real tuning starts now where it's been burnt and now you, you need to like do certain tightening put in certain octaves and yeah various various other things so is it the shape of the note that dictates what the note is um shape and size the shape and size um yeah <laughs> So it was a long day. It was a very long day. It took four hours to get to Bath from Manchester, four hours to get back, and a lot of lifting and carrying with these big ass drums. As you can see, I've got no living room left, but would you look at the beauty of these bass drums? Absolutely beautiful. I'm just in awe. As soon as I learn to play these drums, I'm gonna be posting some videos with some tunes. So subscribe, and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up.